Welcome to my lecture online. Now let's apply what we've learned so far on a circuit that is slightly more complex than what we've seen so far. Here we have a circuit with two meshes. We have a current supply, we have a voltage supply, a resistor, a capacitor, and inductor. And we're trying to find the power supplied or absorbed by any one of these five components, or I should say by all five of these components. So let's do it for each of the five components. To do that, we're going to need to use mesh analysis to calculate the current in each of the meshes, and we're going to also have to find the voltages across each of the components once we find the currents, and then we can find the power. So it's kind of a lengthy process. I'm assuming I'm probably going to need two videos. That's why we're going to have part one and part two for this particular problem. So first, we're going to do some mesh analysis. Now, since in the first mesh we have a current supply supplying 4 amps, we can say that I1 must therefore be 4 amps. So I1 equals 4 amps with a phase angle of 0 degrees. What about I2? Well, for that we have to go around mesh 2, add up all the voltage rises and drops, and then try to figure out what I2 is equal to. So here, we're first going to go across the capacitor. We'll start at this point right here. So let's make this our starting point. Going across the capacitor in the same direction as the current, now notice here that the voltage supply has the positive on this side, the negative on this side, which would therefore mean that the current probably flows in this direction, counterclockwise. We've put I2 as being clockwise, does that matter? Not really. We're just going to assume that's the direction of I2, and then later on we'll probably find with the result of the value for I2 that it's really in the opposite direction. But we don't care. We just want to illustrate that it really doesn't matter what the direction choice is for any of the currents in each of the meshes. So we're just going to erroneously assume I2 is in that direction. So then we have a voltage drop across the uh, capacitor, so therefore we have minus the voltage times the, um, minus the current times the impedance, and so that's minus the current, which is I2, times the impedance of a minus J5. Then we go across the voltage supply from the positive negative terminal, that means that's a voltage drop, minus 60 and a phase angle of 30 degrees. Then we come around here, now we have a voltage drop across the inductor relative to I2, but a voltage rise relative to I1, so we're going to take those two separately. So voltage drop, that would be minus the current, which is I2, multiplied times the, the inductance, uh, not the inductance, but the uh, reactants, J10. And then here we have a voltage rise, so that would be plus I1 times, that would also be J10, and that equals zero. Just ran out of room there. So that's my, my equation for mesh two. So I might as well write that down here. This is mesh two, and this, the first one is for mesh one. Mesh one was easy. All right, so now that I know what I1 is, I can substitute for every I1 right there, this number right here. And so let's simplify things and let's combine what we have for I2. So for I2, we have a minus and a minus here. So minus I2, and I'm going to add these two together. So that would be a minus J5 and a plus J10. So I factor out a minus I2 from these two, and I'm left with a minus J5 and a plus J10. It's really easy to make mistakes with these signs, so we have to be careful. So we have a minus 60 with a phase angle of 30 degrees, and then here we have I1, which is equal to 4 phase angle 10, so that would be here um, uh, plus I1, which is 4 with a phase angle of 0 degrees, and here we have 10 with a phase angle of 90 degrees and that adds up to zero. Okay, so now we have this already in magnitude and phase angle format. Magnitude is phase angle format. Here we probably want to change that to magnitude and phase angle format as well. So to do that, let's see here. Well, actually, first we have to combine the two. So this is a, a plus 5j, and so we have minus i2 times a plus j5, and that would be a 5 with a phase angle of 90 degrees. Okay, so minus 60, phase angle of 30 degrees, 
And then here we have, uh, when we multiply this together, we have plus 4 times 10, which is 40, at the phase angles, 90 degrees. That's equal to 0. All right. So I guess to add those two, we have to convert those back to phase angle and magnitude format. And then we can solve for I2. So let's try that. So we have uh, minus I2 is equal to... Moving this to the other side, I end up with a positive 60 with a phase angle of 30 degrees and a minus 40 with a phase angle of 90 degrees, all divided by what we have here, which is 5 with a phase angle of 90 degrees. Now with the negative, hmm, well, we'll worry about the negative later. All right, so we have that now, so now we need to simplify that. Let's move on here, so I have minus I2 is equal to 60 phase angle 30. Okay, so let's separate those two so we can subtract one from the other. So we have 60 times the cosine. Uh, let's say, no, let's take 30, take the cosine of that, and multiply times 60. So that would be the real part, 51.96. 51.96. And uh, then take the sine of that. So 30 sine, that's, uh, that would be uh, plus 30j, plus j30. There we go. So that's this first one separated like this. On the second one, that's easy. That would be minus j40. And take the whole thing and divide it by 5. And phase angle. Oh, why do I use the square root symbol here? There we go. There, that's better. And there we go, 90 degrees. Okay, so now we're going to combine those two. So this is equal to 51.96. That would be minus J10 and divided by 5, 90 degrees. That would be minus I2. Okay, now we convert that back. So here we have, we square that. We add 100 to that. Take the square root. Now we have 52.92. 52.92 with a phase angle of, that would be 10 divided by 51.96. And take the inverse tangent, that gives us 10.89. That would be minus 10.89, that's an 8, that's 9, divided by 5, phase angle 90 degrees. Okay, so minus I2 is equal to 52.92 divided by 5 gives you a magnitude of 10.58 with a phase angle of this goes to the top that becomes minus 90 that was minus 100.89 degrees but we have a negative here so it's actually a phase angle of 180 degrees we can add 180 to that by getting rid of this so I2 is equal to 10.58 and uh, 100 189, 100.89 uh, minus plus 180, we get 79.11. And so now we finally have current I2 in terms of magnitude and phase angle. We have current I1 in terms of magnitude and phase angle. So now we're in good shape. Now we have the currents. Next thing what we have to do is find the voltages across each of the components and then we're ready to find the average power. Let's first go ahead and write this in its uh, real and imaginary part format because we're going to have to add or subtract this from I1. So let's write that first. So we have 79.11. We'll take the cosine of that and multiply that times 10.58. That gives us, oh, just about 2. So this is equal to 2 plus j, and now take the sine of that, 79.11, take the sine, and multiply it times 10.58, and we get 10.39, 10.39. So that's the real and imaginary format of I2, which we're going to need as well. Now let's go ahead and calculate the voltages. Let's start with the voltage across capacitor. So the voltage across capacitor is equal to the current across the capacitor times, and of course that would be I2, might as well write as I2, 
times the capacitant or the capacitor reactance, so that would be X sub C. So the current I2 would be this one right here, that would be 10.58 with a phase angle of 79.11 degrees. And we're going to multiply the times X sub C, and X sub C is going to be a minus J5, that would be 5, with a phase angle of a minus 90 degrees. Like this. And when we multiply that together, we get 10.58 times 5, that would be 52.9, 52.9, with a phase angle of minus 90, that would be minus 10.89, minus 10.89, and that would be, of course, in terms of uh, volts. Uh, I'm going to write amps here, but it's volts. So this here is the voltage across capacitor. Again, we take the current, I2, which we just found to be 10.58 with a phase angle of 79.11. Of course, this is in terms of amps. And multiply the times X sub C, which is a magnitude of 5 in the negative 90 degree direction with a phase angle of minus 90. And so that gives us, and we might as well put degrees there as well. All right, just to be accurate. That gives us the voltage across the capacitor. Now we want the voltage across the resistor. Voltage across the resistor is equal to I1 multiplied times the resistance R. So in this case, I1 is going to be equal to 4 with a phase angle of 0 degrees. And we're going to multiply it times the resistance, which is 20 with a phase angle of 0 degrees. And so that would be equal to 80 with a phase angle of 0 degrees. And of course, that's in terms of volts. So now we have the voltage drop across the resistor. Now we need the voltage drop across the inductor. So that's a little bit more tricky because now we have both I1 and I2 to contend with. I'm going to use the direction of mesh 2. That would be clockwise direction. So that would be voltage drop for I2 and a voltage rise for I1. So in this case, that would be I2 minus I1. And that would be times X sub L. Okay, I2 in this format right here would be 2 plus J, 10.39. And we're going to subtract from that I1, and I1 is going to be 4 with a phase angle of 0, so that would be simply equal to 4 with no imaginary part. So that would be I2 minus I1. And then we have X sub L, and X sub L is going to be uh, 10 with a phase angle of 90 degrees, like this. And so this becomes equal to minus 2 plus J 10.39, multiply times 10 with a phase angle of 90 degrees. And let's see here. What we could do is we can pull out a negative sign. I always like to do that. It makes it a little bit easier. I'm going to pull out a negative sign, make that positive, and make this negative. And then we're going to go ahead and convert this into a magnitude and phase angle format. So that gives us 10.39. And I guess that would be the same as what we had over there, right? That would be the same over here. So let's go ahead and re continue on this side. V sub L is equal to, this a minus times this quantity in magnitude format that would be here. So it would be minus 10.58. But notice that's now going to be a negative imaginary part, so the phase angle is going to be negative with a negative 79.11 degrees. Multiply times 10 and 90, 10 with a phase angle of 90 degrees, like this. And so this is equal to 10 times this, that would be minus 105.8 with a phase angle of a positive 10.89 degrees. And then we can say, well, let's see here, V sub L, I think that's good enough. We're going to leave it like this because we can work with this negative sign later. So we have a magnitude 105.8, of course that's in volts. We have this here in volts and we have this in volts. So we have V sub C right here, we have V sub R right here, 
and we have V sub L right there. Now we're ready to calculate the power. And we're going to do that in part two because the power is going to be the product of I max times Z max. We have I for I1 and I2, and we have V for all three components. And so now we're ready to go ahead and calculate the phase angles. What about the voltage across the, hmm, well, since I'm out of room, we're going to do that in the next video. We still need to find the voltage across the current source. And that voltage across the current source is going to be the same as the voltage from here to here, which means it's going to be the voltage drop across the 20 ohm, resist, 20, 20 ohm resistor and the voltage drop across the inductor. But since I'm out of room here, I'll go ahead and do that on the next video. We'll find the voltage across the, the current supply, and then we're ready to find the power for all five components. So stay tuned on the next video, and we'll show you how to continue with this problem.